Good morning, everyone. Hi, my name is Marcio. I'm one of the teaching pastors here. Excited that you're participating in our Sunday morning experience because we all get to do this together, and that's always exciting. And so we're doing this one standoff sermon called Prayer Blockers. And I'm hoping it's going to challenge you and excite you and leave you, and you're going to leave here more excited about your relationship with Jesus. And you're going to be thinking, you know what? I got to be here on that week of prayer. I'm going to put that on my calendar. I'm going to rearrange my schedule. I'm going to make it happen because that week of prayer is going to really, really, I think, change the direction of our church. It's going to be something that I, in all of us, God's going to do powerfully, not just in us, but in our church. So that's exciting. When I was 17 years old, I um, went to school one morning and I decided to wear um, kind of like these bedroom slippers. But they were just, they, they, you know, they had a back on them, but they looked, and they were obviously bedroom slippers. And so I'm about to walk out of the house, and my mom's like, hey, don't, don't wear those. I'm like, why? She's like, I, it's just, it's, you shouldn't wear those to school. And in, my back, in the back of my mind, I'm like, what is she talking about? What does she know? You know, and nobody looks at my feet. Nobody looks at people's feet. Right? What's the big deal? And I knew that I could get in trouble for it, but I, you know, forget, forget what does mom know? So what do I do? I go to school, and guess what happens? Some teacher happens to see it, gives me a referral, and says, hey, you need to go home and uh, change, your shoes. If you, change your shoes if you want to stay here for the rest of the day, if you want to come back to school. I'm like, you know what? I'll go, I'll go change, and I'll come back. So when I left, I went to West Orange High School. So I was on Beulah, and between Beulah and Daniels Road, there was this dirt road. And I think some of you know it's now paved. And I took that dirt road thinking, oh, I'll just make it home. And at the time, I was driving a pickup truck, just, just got it, was learning how to maneuver it. It was a 1994 tomato red Ford Splash, Ford Ranger Splash. It was awesome. It was such an awesome car. And so I, I get in the curve in this dirt road, and um, I just gassed it a little bit, and I wasn't used to driving a truck, so I started fishtailing. I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know where I'm going. And then the truck leaned, just stopped on this ditch, but on the top of the ditch, I'm like, okay, I'm, I think I'm safe. I could get out of here. And suddenly the car just fell. And just, it just slid down. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. So the police officer from the school somehow heard about it. He got there, but he didn't give me a ticket. You know, I was just really friendly. Maybe he liked me. Who knows? I made him laugh. Um, so we talked, but then to the guy, some guy who lived right down the street, his parents owned a plant nursery, like, you know, gardens and stuff like that. So he's like, hey, I'll pull out your truck, but you got to work for me for two days for free. I'm like, yes, let's do that. So I, he pulls me out, I go home and tell my mom everything that happened. She's like, of course, I told you so. Every kid wants to hear that. Um, but now I do it with my kids. I told you so, you know, I get to do it back to them. Um, but here's what it was interesting. L later on that weekend, I, I wanted to go out and uh, who do you ask for money, right? Because I didn't have any money. So who did I ask? I asked mom. I was like, hey, mom, can I get some money? She's like, no, you ain't getting any money out of me. You look what you did. You just disobeyed me. You disrespected me. You did all this stuff. I didn't give him any money. And it was interesting because I thought everything was cool. Like, every, I thought everything was cool between mom and I a couple days, you know, past. But no, nah, it's like I disrespected her. I didn't obey. I thought I could do my own thing my own way. And I got blocked from her blessing. I was like, I wanted some money. And she said, no, go mooch off of one of your friends or something. Figure it out. And it's interesting because I share this story, and this is kind of our relationship with God, if you think about it. Because, see, God is still good to us. And even if you don't have a relationship with God, I want you to understand what I'm about to say. God is still good to you. It's just, it, you see, I violated my mom's principle, but guess what? She was still good to me to let me live in her home, and I get to experience the goodness of of the life that I had in that home. And, and God allows you to experience his goodness. And when you experience anything good in your life, that's God's gift to you. Please understand that. But when you want to extend and receive favor and blessings from God, but you don't obey him or you don't follow his standards, and, you, and then you pray and you don't get what you asked for, and then you're wondering, why is this happening? Well, it's because... You disobeyed God. You disobeyed his standards. You, you rejected his value system. And so here's what's interesting. Sometimes we get mad at God for not answering our prayers, and it, 
And, and we understand, wait a minute, should I really be mad at him? Is it really his fault or is it mine? See, what I want you to understand is that sin, if there's sin in your life, there's unresolved things that we're going to talk about four things today. And if you don't deal with these things, look, your prayers are going to be blocked. Blocked. Let me, let me show you a visual of what blocking means. Troy, ball me. Thank you. All right. It's a basketball. Feel me? So, in basketball, what's the score? What's the point of the game? Get the ball in the hoop. Very simple. I love playing basketball. I enjoy it thoroughly. But there's a problem. See, you have people that play defense on you, and their goal is not to let you, right, score. So, Troy, can I have this? I need, I need you guys to see the visual of what it's like. Sandy, you might want to, <laughs> yeah. Sandy, you might want to just get ready. Just splash on. Okay, you need to back up there, Shaq. All right. So Dikembe's over here. All right. Now, here's what I need you to understand. See, you go through life. You go through life, and you're thinking everything's good, and the defenders are playing you, and this is life. God, I love you, you know, but I'm going to do my own thing. God, I don't really know you, but I'm going to do my own thing. Thank you for the blessing of life. Thank you for the things you're giving me. And then you have this moment, a crisis. Or maybe you want something that is going to make you better, whatever it is. And you think, well, let me go to God and ask him. But you're still not resolved with some issues. There's still things in your life that you're not willing to let go of. And we're going to talk about these things. And what you're going to do, you're going to go and you think, okay, God, here go me, launch up my prayer. Boom! Go like that, like that. Just, no. That's, you're going to have to hold that for me. Um, let's thank Troy, Mount Troy. I know you saw that simple, simple, simple little illustration here. Simple. But that's what our lives are like when we choose to hold on to some of these things we're going to talk about. And then when we pray, here comes, boom, sin, and just blocks it right out. It prevents us from receiving God's blessing. And I want you to know, and we're going to end this sermon with letting you know that God wants to bless us. So let's talk about the first prayer blocker, which is this, refusing to let go of, uh, of cherished sins. I love the word cherished because it's not big sins. We're not talking about, we're talking about these little things that you cherish. These little things. I cherish frozen Skittles. So sometimes what I'll do, listen, what I'll do is I'll grab a bag of Skittles and I'll hide them in the back of the freezer so my little kids and their little claws don't get them. <laughs> and every once in a while, I love to feel the cold crackle of the Skittles on my tongue, and it's amazing. I don't want my kids to share that because they're mine, so I cherish them, so I hide them. And see, some of us in this room, this is you. Like, you have this sin that you're not willing to let go of. It's small. It's not big. It's not this big sin, but, but it's something small. And look what the psalmist says in Psalm 66. He says this, if I had been aware of malice in my heart, if I, been, had, if I had cherished this, the NIV uses the word cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If I had cherished sin, if I had been, it, it, I love how that word is played out, and if I had been aware of the malice in my heart, if I just would have kept that in there, listen, listen, you wouldn't have listened to me. So what is it? What is it? Is it some flirtation that's happening at work that's really innocent? Maybe it's online with some friend from high school back in the day. And you say, oh, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal, but it's doing something in you. Is it something you're not, what, what is it that you're not willing to let go? Is, is it a, like a little habit that you have? Maybe it's a little outburst of anger just to show your dominance somewhere. Or what is it? Is it that you're cutting, cutting some corners at work or in relationship or in something? Or, or is it that maybe, you know, is there something that you're listening to or watching that you just indulge in and you're like, you know, it's not a big deal, but you know it's doing something to your heart? See, for me, I know that there are things that I do that I need to not do, and there's certain, like for me, and I'm not trying to be legalistic here, but there are certain shows that I just don't watch because I know what it does to my heart. 
I know what it does to my mind. There's certain behaviors that I have that I know I got to stop that. I got to give that up because I don't want my prayers to be blocked. So my question to you is, what are you cherishing? Can you go back to that first point, please? What are you cherishing? What are you cherishing? It's blocking you. Because here's the thing. God wants to bless you. He wants to. He wants to give you good things. He wants to. We're going to get into that. But what is it? What, what's blocking you? What's up there like just as soon as he's like, oh, God, please, blah, 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 this. And then it comes up and just goes, Poof. comes out of nowhere like LeBron James. You know, what is it? So let's go to the, the second point. Uh, can you put up the second point, please? Holding on to bitterness and refusing to forgive. This is the second one. So the first one is, what are you cherishing? The second one is, maybe you're not willing to forgive. Maybe you're holding on to some bitterness and you're not willing to let go because of what that person did to me. Here's what Jesus says in Mark eleven twenty five. 25. And whenever you stand praying... If you have anything against anyone, I love this. It's not, look, Jesus just put this huge blanket statement. He says, anything against anyone. Anything means anything. Anyone means anyone. So it's, it's pretty, like, you could, you could review this in the Greek and Hebrew, and it still means the same thing, y'all. He says, forgive him or her so that your father, your heavenly father, the one you're supposed to have an intimate relationship with in heaven will also forgive you your wrongdoing. Now, this is not talking about salvation, about losing salvation, or earning salvation. God, Jesus is strictly talking to, look, if you have a problem with someone in your life, if you have a problem with someone in your life, it's going to affect your relationship with your heavenly father. And you got to get this squared away. Our command is to forgive. How that is acted out, how that is lived out, God is going to give you clarity and vision on how to do that. Because I know some, everybody's like, well, what about if I have, does that mean I have to hang out with this person? Does that mean I have, to, I have to spend time with this person? This person really hurt me. This person did this to me. Look, look. God's not asking you to do that. He's just asking you to forgive the person, and it starts in your heart. And if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit... He's going to guide you and give you wisdom to say, you know what, I don't need to spend time with that person. But I forgave him. I have a friend of mine who's a counselor, and he, he got his Ph.D. in high conflict issues and forgiveness. Like, that was his Ph.D. So you imagine the stories he heard of horrific things that happened to people and how they had to forgive and how they forgave and how they found freedom in that. And he said to me one day, he's like, Marcio, when you're talking about forgiveness, sometimes it's just encouraging the person to talk to God and say, hey, God, I'm not ready to forgive, but I'm ready to even have the desire to start wanting to, to consider the thought to start forgiving. And let me tell you what, your heavenly Father will work with that. If you start, just say, look, I, I'm not ready, but I'm willing to consider it, and I'm willing to take a step forward to think about it. Would you help me? And I'm telling you, God will take initiative. God will take intentionality. God will take that and start working in your heart and start moving you towards forgiveness. Why? Because God wants to bless you, and one of the blessings you'll get is freedom in your life from that bondage of unforgiveness and bitterness. And let me tell you what, the other thing that God sees that when we aren't willing to forgive is that he sees that it's going to start affecting those relationships around us. And we start getting angry at people for no reason. Start getting, you know, just snippy at people for no reason and being, being mean to people for no reason, that's because of this issue of unforgiveness. And I'm telling you, God wants to bless your life. He wants, he wants to take your prayers and give you way more than you could ever hope, dream, or imagine. But are you willing, are you willing to forgive? So part one, you know, the first one, maybe some of you, it's cherished sin, a cherished sin. You have a cherished sin, something you're not willing to let go, something you're willing to hide in the back of the freezer just for you. God's saying, hey, we got to deal with that. You got to throw that away. Or... It's this one. It's, for, it's dealing with bitterness and unforgiveness. Maybe it's the third one. Failing to show compassion to the poor. 
failing to show compassion to the poor? Let's look at what the Proverbs says, Proverbs 21, 13. The one who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will himself or herself also cry out and not be answered. Keep this up here for a minute, Ethan. Thanks. So like when somebody's in need, you kind of just, you kind of you turn away, you know? It's kind of like uh, at home, dads, when, uh, do you remember when your kids were young and they were yelling and screaming and you just pretend like you didn't hear them? So then your wife had to go deal with it? Because I remember that. Sometimes I was in bed and it was one of the kids, either Gabe or Isaiah. Sometimes it was just both. And it'd be like, ah, ah, ah. And I'd look at her and be like, hold up. <laughs> you know, just pretend like I'm asleep. Just turn my ears. Don't have to deal with it. Don't make me feel bad like I'm the only one who did that. I guarantee you, every dad in here, don't you dare make, give me that condom, condemning look like, oh, you're a, well, I know you did it too. We all done it. We all turn our, 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 our you know, we all shut our ears from the needs of others. And, and what God is telling us very clearly is, hey, look, look, I want to bless you, but when you, when I, move you with the power of my Holy Spirit to show compassion to somebody. To show compassion to somebody and you don't respond to it. And you don't respond to it. Don't, and then you pray to me, listen, you're, if I, listen, you can't handle the little bits that I'm giving you, the opportunities that I give you. Why would I give you more? It's hard to hear it that way, but that's what God is saying. He wants to bless us, but when we are unwilling to be his, his representatives, to be the church, and what it means to be the church, it means to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, and when we fail to do that, when we fail to do that, we're failing to be like Jesus to people who need him. And I want you to consider the word poor, not just with physical resources, but I want you to consider it with also in spirit. Because there are some people that don't know Jesus that God wants you to invest in their life, and this is, listen, and spend time with them and talk to them. And, and, and look, I don't know what God's going to tell you to do, but here's what I can tell you. The Holy Spirit's going to tell you to do something. And whatever he does, Jesus already calculated that risk that you'll take. He's fully aware of the risk that you will take, and he understands that. So you need to wrestle with him and not just say, oh, I don't want to deal with it because I might get taken advantage of. Listen, our Heavenly Father sent out Jesus who got taken advantage of for us. So being like Jesus might mean that, but we're willing to step into that because we're going to receive a greater blessing in return. And seeing someone's life come to know Jesus, there's nothing like it. Nothing like being that hands and feet of Jesus, because that's why our church, guess what, guys? A dream center is coming soon. God willing, we're going to put up a dream center, and, and we're under-resourced people, not just get their physical needs met, but they're going to get their spiritual needs met, and many people will come to know Christ, and many marriages will get restored, and many, and many lives will change radically, because so many of us in this room are willing to say, you know, I'm not going to shut my ears, and then God's going to bless you with creativity, passion, resources to help those in need, I'm telling you. It's how, it, how he does it. He focuses on your time, your talents, your abilities, and your treasures, your finances, your time. And somehow, he'll figure out ways to bless you with more of these. It's really powerful. So that you could be his hands and feet to people. So is this one for you? Is this one you're struggling with? If you're wondering, man, why hasn't God answered my prayers? What's blocking my prayers? What's, what's up there just sending my prayers to the front row? What is it? Is it, is it this? Make sure you deal with it. Make sure you talk to God about it because he's willing. He wants to bless you. He wants to move you towards you living the life that you're supposed to live. So let's look at the last one, which is failing to live by kingdom principles. And this is, listen, this one right here, if, if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, this one is going to get you. Because when you, when you say you follow Jesus, you're willing to give your life to the principles of Jesus. You're saying, okay, your value systems, your ways of living is what I want to own, adopt, embrace, and execute in my life and live out in my life and practice in my life. So if you're failing to, to, 
to live out his kingdom principles and you're wondering why isn't God responding? Why is this God not out there? Well, maybe it starts by having a relationship with him. Let's look at James. James is the brother of Christ, also known as Jimmy. Um, and in chapter four, verses two and three, Jimmy writes, right? He says this, you desire and do not have. You murder and covenant and cannot obtain. And I find it interesting you say murder and covenant. These are the Ten Commandments. And Jesus says, hey, if you even have anger towards your brother, it's like murdering him. It's interesting. It's not, you know, it's not like go and you know, commit murder. But our anger towards somebody is like that. It's funny because James heard his brother say this teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. And he's like regurgitating it, just repackaging it. You fight and wage war against other people. You're constantly fighting other people. You're constantly at war, not just with other people, but also with, with, with your heavenly father because our hearts are not aligned. It says, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. No one wants to admit this, that really some of the things we pray for, it's, it's just really for us. I was at a funeral yesterday of a good friend of mine, um, his dad, and he was able to speak for his dad, and he said something interesting about his dad who loved Jesus, and he said, my dad loved Jesus, and my dad loved people. My dad loved people. And he loved them, and his heart was so aligned with people because his heart was aligned with Jesus that he wanted to spend time with people not for what he could get out of them. And sometimes us as Christians, and especially, and especially when we walk away from Jesus, which is not good, because some of us as Christians, we, we kind of, we've kind of sometimes, you, you, have the, you take this walk, and you go down the road, and you forget how much Jesus loves you, and you start operating on your own system, and you start looking like the rest of the world who operates on their own system, because true love for Jesus Christ, what that does in all of us, it makes our hearts and our loves pure. Where, where the, the, without Jesus, your love is going to be conditional in some way, shape, or form. That if I spend time with you, it's because I'm trying to get ahead in my career, or I want something eventually in the long run, so I'll be nice with you. Where Jesus' love for us was, I'm going to spend time with you, and you, and you, and I'm going to give my life to you, and I don't want anything in return. And when we fail to live by God's principles, Jesus' principles, we, for, we, we lose that line, and we forget what love really looks like. I love what Jesus says in Matthew 7. He says this, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children. So he's talking about parents. And he's, I know that word evil. We don't like to hear that. I'm like, mom, I'm not evil. I'm a good person. Look, and compared to God's standards of perfection, we all stand as evil. That makes sense. And he's saying, Jesus saying, look, you actually give good gifts to your children and we're not even perfect like like, we could say, yeah, we're good parents. We do good to our kids. And Jesus is saying, look, comparison to your holy heavenly father, you're giving good gifts, and you're not even like him. But here's who he is. Then he takes this flip, and he says, look, I want to show you something about my heavenly father. How much more, how much more, how much more, how much more do you think God wants to bless you? How much more do you think God wants to show you his love for you? How much more do you think God loves you? Like, it's pretty special. Will your heavenly father, will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Like, God wants to give us good gifts gifts. God is wanting to bless us. God is desiring to show you that he loves you. God is, can't wait for you to open up the gifts he has for you. Like this is who God's character is. And that word father, Jesus uses as Abba father, as an intimate, close father. Like your heart is aligned with his. It's so interesting that my daughter plays with the neighbor down the street, and, and she and they play a lot, and, and she calls her dad Poppy. And so when Madeline is around her friend, she says, hey, Poppy, how you doing, Poppy? And she's funny. She's calling this guy dad, right? But it's different when Madeline comes to me and calls me dad. There's so much more intimacy, so much more relationship there. 
And I want you this morning to understand that God is frustrated at us sometimes when we see him as like Poppy, as like this person who's kind of up there and really nice. And we think he might want to bless us. We're not, we're not sure, but he's been nice to us. And God wants you to see him as dad. God wants you to see him as your dad, as your heavenly father who loves you. And I know that some of us in this room have had horrible father experiences. But I'm telling you, your heavenly father is perfect. And he wants to show you how much he loves you. And when we start walking with him and spending time with him and aligning our hearts with him, he's ready to bless us. Look at what Matthew 6, says. Jesus says this, seek first, but seek first. And the, and the whole contrast he's making that we have a tendency of seeking our own value systems, our own pleasures, our own desires, what we want. And he's saying, look, seek first God's ways. God's principles and God's ways and his righteousness. And everything you've ever wanted will be provided for you. All these things you were thinking is all important will be provided for you and more because Jesus says in John 14, if you pray and ask anything in my name, I'll give it to you. But there's, there's something interesting about that because we think, oh, it's just anything I want. It's about having your heart aligned. It's about having your heart aligned with God's heart to see that he wants to bless you. I have a, a friend of mine and he is about eight or seven years younger than his two sisters. And I asked this guy, this friend of mine, I was like, hey man, how did you end up getting all the, like, the best gifts from your dad? Like, what did you figure out that your sisters didn't figure out? He said, you know what, I figured out that if I start liking what my dad likes, he's gonna start blessing me with a lot more cooler things. So if my dad likes guitar, I started liking guitar. So when he bought himself a guitar, guess who got a guitar? If he got new strings, guess who got new strings? If he got the new gadget for the guitar, guess who got the new gadget for the guitar? My dad likes surfing, so when he got himself a new surfboard, a new uh, bodysuit, you know, a wetsuit and, 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 and wax and fins, guess who got a new board? wax, fins, and wetsuit. I just figured out if I ask to spend time with my dad and align my heart with my father, all the gifts I get are way more than I ever hoped, dream, or imagined. Like, it, it works. I looked at this guy, and I was like, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. Just don't give that information to my kids. <laughs> and your heavenly father, listen to me, your heavenly father wants you to align your heart with his. What you'll discover, you're going to discover his unconditional love for you and his grace and his power and his wisdom will fill your life and your marriage, your relationships, your career, your whole purpose in life will be filled with his energy, his power, his zeal, his passion, his love. Then when you ask, you're suddenly starting to realize, man, I'm asking for things that you care about and the things you care about becoming the things I care about and I love what you care about. I want to start asking God, bless people in my office. Start letting me see people come to know Jesus and watch God start helping you see people believe in Jesus as a result of your life. God, I want to help people, you know, set, be free from these problems they have and these addictions. And God, set me free from my cherished sins and my things. And watch how God brings you around a community of people where you feel like you belong to a family and you're walking and you're doing life with people and you're starting to see yourself be free. But you're also helping others get free too from certain things that are blocking their prayers. And suddenly you're seeing God answer your prayers in your family with your kids in your life. Man, God, you know what? I, I just want to be more like you. I want to fall more in love with you because I want to know more about what you have in store for me. And as I become more like you, show me who you are so I can become more like you. And what you start to realize, man, is that when you walk into work, you have a lot more influence because you're becoming like Jesus. Because think about it. Jesus is probably the most influential human being to ever walk the face of this earth. Right? Never, never traveled more than what? I don't know, 30 miles from his house? Never wrote a book, never took office, but yet, hey, let's change the calendar. Let's go make a whole holiday for him. You know, let's, let's you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make, you know, we'll just change the, 
the way we see life as a result of this one human being, it's a powerful influence. And so when you begin to ask Jesus, help me become more like you, he's going to do it. And you're going to start seeing people differently. You're going to start seeing life differently. And lastly, you get to live beyond yourself like him. Like suddenly you have passions you never thought you had. You start seeing human beings the way Jesus sees them with value. It doesn't matter what political view they are, whatever lifestyle they live. Suddenly you see them and you see their soul and all you care about is like, I love you because I want you to know Jesus and I'm going to give my heart to you. So Jesus, help me be better with that person. Help me understand that person. And watch God bless your life. Watch things you never thought you would want suddenly become the very things you've always desired. And so church, let's be the church. Let's be that church that are aligning ourselves with God's heart. And when we walk around, we walk around hashtag blessed because we know God loves us. All right? We know God loves us. And he wants to answer our prayers. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, there are people in here who want your blessings, but today was like a revelation for them. They're like, oh my gosh, I finally realized it. There are some things I got going on in my heart, and that's what's blocking me from you. So Jesus, I ask you to reveal to them what those things are. Help them deal with this so they could see how much you want to bless their lives. And if there's someone in here who doesn't know you, Jesus, and their heart, and right now their soul is stirring, they're like, yeah, I, I, I need a relationship with God. I, I think this is it. I pray that they would just ask right now, just, just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I want to commit my life to you. I want to just have you be the leader of my life. Teach me how to be like you. And Jesus, now continue to bless that person. Let them see how you're going to answer prayers and let them see how you've answered prayers in the past that they might not even realize you've answered. And God, thank you for being good to us. And may we leave here more inspired, more engaged, more in tune with who you are so we can bless this world for your glory. Amen.